Now, let's discuss political implications here, especially in the Soviet Union. The Soviet Union had very little resources, and that's why they disbanded, because communism, number one, doesn't work, and the Soviet Union as a whole collectively were poor. They were poor, so they had to get their athletes together and have some sort of standardized training. And so what they did was they brought them all together to a training camp, trained for one month, they housed the athletes, they fed the athletes, they clothed the athletes, they provided them with the right equipment that they needed, whether it be weights or gymnastic apparatuses, what have you. But they couldn't do that for more than one month at a time because the Soviet Union was broke. And so it was political um, necessity that brought them together for that one month and, and made them train in that brutal sense because they knew they had to blast them for four weeks. That's all they had their athletes for. And they had no idea what was going to happen when they went back to their local coaches. So they had to blast them for a month and know, knowing that their muscles were broken down and probably take them two or three weeks to recover. And then they'd see them again, you know, six weeks later. So it's not an optimal model of confusing the body. Let me tell you something. The premise may work a little bit. The P90X, you confuse the body. Yes, if you confuse the body, the body is in a state of high alert because it's in our DNA to protect ourselves. So if we're doing something that the body uh, perceives as dangerous, of course we're going to protect ourselves. Our muscles are going to contract more. We're going to have uh, we're going to be have a we're going to have a heightened state of awareness because we're looking out for ourselves. We don't want to hurt ourselves. Now the flip side of that, you're turning on the fight or flight system which is stimulated by the adrenal glands. The adrenal medulla is going to be stimulated by an increase in epinephrine which is adrenaline and basically that adrenaline flush is going to put you on high alert. It's going to increase your um, heart rate. It's also going to increase your blood pressure. It's going to increase your lung capacity, your mental function. And what is a byproduct of high adrenaline? And when you're constantly stimulating high adrenaline through muscle confusion, a byproduct of that is cortisol and other stress-related hormones. Now, cortisol and other stress-related hormones, they degrade muscle tissue. Okay, Cortisol and, and other related stress hormones degrade muscular tissue. So as you're confusing the body and you have a higher rate of muscle contraction, you also have to look at the fact that you're increasing more stress hormones than you would if you had a progressive program where the body and mind, the neuromuscular system, got used to the program. They got used to the program. There's less stress there. When you're confusing the body, when you're confusing the neuromuscular system, there's more stress. More stress equals more muscle catabolism. So you have to look at that very carefully when you're comparing programs to one another. Okay, so the, the whole argument that they make at P90X is if you don't confuse the body, you're not going to make the adaptation. Well, they're right in a sense. Now, let's take that same example of doing the bench press over and over. Now, you're doing the bench press, you're doing the same amount of reps, the same amount of uh, sets, and you're using the same amount of intensity and the same amount of, of rest periods. If you do that, there is, going to, there is going to be a plateau in training. But keep in mind, a plateau happens no matter what you do, whether you're doing muscle confusion or, or, or not, whether you're implementing that or not. There is going to be a plateau at some point. Well, that is easily, easily uh, countered by, say, you have a, a progressive training. Now, you could do the same exercise for eight weeks in a row and still grow like a bat out of hell. How? By increasing intensity. You take a loaded barbell and you increase the weight every single workout, every single time you do a specific exercise, and that's how you get over the hump. And you don't have to worry about the catabolic effects of confusing your neuromuscular system. Your neuromuscular system is primed because it knows that it has to work hard because the weight keeps increasing, so you have that alert alertness. You have that maximal motor unit potential, but at the same time, you're not going to increase your stress hormones because the body knows what to expect. Now, that is the big difference I see between a very scientifically proven progressive training plan and the P90X. And here's another thing that you guys should consider about the P90X. If the P90X's premise is muscle confusion, is to constantly throw your mind and body off by giving it new stimulus, then why are guys doing it four or five times and still saying they're gaining benefits from it? If the whole premise is based off confusing the body, 
don't you think your mind, your body, your nervous, your neuromuscular system would get the program after four or five rounds? Okay, so that has no scientific value. You do it for 90 days and then you do four or five more rounds of it. How are you going to benefit from that? And the answer is very little. 